This channel is for immature audiences only. It is not for children, only for childish adults. We might play some video games that kids also like, but we say words like fuck and shit with alarming frequency and make crude, inappropriate, and morbid jokes all the damn time. Level 0 NPCs assumes no responsibility if your idiot spawn watches this and gets traumatized. 3 to 1 Hank. 3 to 1 Hank? Hank? <laughs> oh, we're finally back. Yeah, yeah we we uh we had a just an odd couple weeks and for various reasons couldn't make it and to be truthful we sort of didn't want to today either but here we are <laughs> we're here for you yeah yeah we're here for we, you. we miss you guys we there do was a, yeah there was a point in, uh, you know today where i messaged the guys and i'm like you know we're two weeks down i'm not sure i'm being in the right energy today but for the pcs i'll make it work yeah and so here i am this is specifically What's, uh, for you, fun for Algernon, who just discovered <laughs> our channel. <laughs> I uh, and then we I took two weeks them. off. <laughs> our uh, our viewers have they come had to plenty expect. to watch in the interim. I'm fairly certain. So yeah, I, I know. Oh, uh, uh, I for I forgot the Romans from the planet crawl. <laughs> uh, yeah, our viewers typically come to expect our B game. You may be getting closer to the C game today. Maybe. Who knows? Look, our our A game is an average B game. I I'm willing to say. On the upside, though, um, I, uh, I I found something. What'd you find? Oh yeah. Yeah, I found my mouth organ. Mouth organ. Oh yeah, I it's found gonna, my mouth organ. Hold on, where's my frost spell? Oh my no, spell? no, what's I'm, happening? What, am I low on mana? Oh. oh no, wait a minute, hold on, I gotta put my. I yeah. Uh, C I game. Put my sword away for that. Oh, I think it's maybe right. D it's game. All right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> We're fine. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take this route this time. Put my sword away. Uh, use okay. your use uh, it's on two. Use your Do OP you spell. Oh yeah, the the frost breath. Do you think a harmonica is so named because it's a good way to ward off monicas? <laughs> it just harms monica. I yeah. don't know any monicas, but next time I find one, I well, will attempt to harm her with this. Well, I think the reason you don't know any monicas is that you've been keeping them away with your like, harm monica. Oh my god, what a great theory. Okay. All right. Yeah. You barely survived that. I did. We're doing was, great. You know. Look, I, I don't know. Getting through the king pageant is going to be an effort. But we're going to Look, I've got the sigil of Naxos and an atlas armband. I don't even know what that is. I don't know, but we should put it on. It has a magical feel to it. And it seems very light for its size. Plus, two, four, five hundred drachmas. So we, we got should what just we came equip for. everything like we've never been hurt before. Just yeah. <laughs> oh, and the rest of them ran. Yeah. See. I like how they have Spanish tile on the underside of their ceiling. That's how that works. Yeah. Yeah. It's just Spanish tile. This is there is just sky on the other side of this. There must be so, so, there must be so drafty in there. <laughs> when it rains, it just comes down in sheets. They just, well, they, they, they actually do the same thing they do in the top of the roof, but they do it on the bottom. So it's like a, they're like tubes. Yeah. <laughs> I know this style of architecture. I'm somewhat of an artist. It's uh, actually not Spanish <laughs> tile. It's just whole shafts of bamboo. Yeah, it's 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 clay tubing. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Everybody loves it. It really directs the water into your house. <laughs> uh, so uh, you guys must have missed us, eh? Because we got we got a bunch of we got a bunch of questions for Glory and stuff. We're gonna have to get to. <laughs> We're gonna have to get to. Uh, <laughs> So I was just uh, remarking to the guys before we got started today that uh, I think, you know, there are many 
very useful powers to have, but sometimes I kind of wish that I could just manifest white noise, <laughs> even just internally. Um, just like stare off into the into the like background and just have like sea sounds and in, inside my head where I could just not hear the rest of the universe. I yeah, picture a picture like a close up of Luke's face. I know you guys you, you probably don't know what Luke's face looks like, but imagine <laughs> it anyway. It's appeared on the show once or twice. And we've, uh, we've had face reveals, okay? Oh nice. The only one that you don't know uh, the only face you haven't seen is mine, and like as we've established, that wouldn't be good for you to see. No, um, I don't know if what you have well could be you. considered a face. It'd be I... a, like, <laughs> yeah, like let like be, like. There's a sense of directionality to a face that really doesn't apply to me. Uh, but yeah, picture Luke's face, and just like the camera gets closer and closer, he's just staring into space, and the ocean noise gets louder and louder. Yeah. yeah, that's uh, yeah. That would, that's, that, that's what Luke wants. That would do it. I mean, I would say you wouldn't get into the X Men, but I don't know. I'm pretty sure you would. The there X-Men were some shitty X Men. Yeah. I mean, if if Professor X needed us needed some time away, you know, maybe that's maybe that's what I'm here for. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like he just reads my mind and gets <laughs> caught up in the white noise too. You know. <laughs> oh yeah, you'd be a great assistant for Professor X. He'd get so sick yeah. of hearing people's thoughts, and you could just. Like radiate white noise and just tune just them all focus up. Focus down on my mind, yeah. You you would mind. like he'd keep you around as a noise machine to literally help him <laughs> sleep. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm like your ocean sounds machine next to your bed at night. Yeah, I particularly yeah. like that X Man power because it's almost impossible to prove that you have it. <laughs> it's true i could live an entirely normal life unless it was audible like unless you were actually producing audible white noise then you I, know i think the perfect would be if it was audible but only if it got really close to my head <laughs> <laughs> so if someone's like yeah no way i don't hear anything you're like no lean closer and they lean in and they really do hear it and then they actually do yeah. have to sort of question their whole sense of <laughs> reality and human biology which which was it they had they had a guy named Doug Ramsey and all he could do is he could like read any language that was his mutant power <laughs> i mean so so studying for a long time your mutant power is multilingualism Good let me job. let me check i'm right there cuz i don't want to i don't want to look like a fool there um, are some things like you could you could make a really good living that way. Like you wouldn't be a very interesting X Man, but there are things in the world that we can't read. Um, That's true. Like we just just don't know because um, like the like standardization of language, um, especially like our our recognizable languages today, is kind of a relatively modern human invention. Um. They'll fish up like a sword out of a river and it'll have runes on it. And just people will just never know what those runes say because we don't can't even agree on what language it is. But he'd be able to just look at the sword and it just says, um, it just says, you know, uh, fuck you, Steve. <laughs> Property of Dave. <laughs> so, yeah, he, he could he could translate any like uh, written or spoken language, alien or nice. human, no matter what. Uh, and he got on the X Men team, and he died. He actually died because he because uh, uh, he went on a mission when all he, of his yeah, all of he, his powers he, were translating. He went on a few missions, and and the fact that he survived any of them is huge. <laughs> yeah, I I feel like bringing your interpreter on a life or death mission against like the Krull is probably or the were they called the Krull? The uh, was a it was probably a bad move. Oh, I don't know, but yeah, he's. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember how he died, but he did die. Uh, yeah, imagine going up against a sentinel when that is your power. It's like, well, guess yeah. that's it for me. You might throw the sentinel for a second because it's cycling through its various weapons that it uses to kill X Men, and it takes it a while to <laughs> realize. Oh, empty any, fist anything is will probably do. fine. A- anything will yeah. do. Yeah. Close can, fist. Yeah, I could just stomp this one or shoot it with a regular bullet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. 
There you go. Doug Ramsey. Cypher, a.k.a. Cypher. Yeah. yeah. It makes sense yeah. that he died. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, he, well, he came back, and apparently they gave him combat powers because they realized he can't just, you know. You don't just give some. I, I feel like adding combat powers to a mutant that is otherwise kind of trash lessens mut- mutants in general. Like, I think that there should be X Men who are who are born with just really pointless superpowers. I think that makes the whole X universe a lot more interesting. Oh, yeah. Also, one of my favorite things is to use the term X-Man instead of mutant. <laughs> I actually I actually like, you know, I, I quite like the X-Men comics. And I, like, I understand the distinction. But I really love, instead of referring to it as mutant powers, always saying X-Man powers. Uh, or I think... Yeah, like sometimes, like I'll describe myself as being so angry, I'm going to manifest my X Man powers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah. like I see, I, like I want to see uh, a mutant whose power is that they can sweat at will. <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, we should play this game a little bit. Oh yeah, we don't want to do another like podcast me? episode. Three weeks. <clears throat> Whatever we have yeah. these, we 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 get on these tangents. People know. Uh, this is the Hall of Kings, uh, and it is uh, without um, permission. <clears throat> yeah. Oh, do I need to show you the thing that I found? Uh, do I need to equip it and show it to you? Like, okay, yeah. You have earned the right to destroy the undead ability. <laughs> oh, Hera! <laughs> <laughs> That's what it said down at the bottom. I don't know why. <laughs> the Prince of Shapia has freed the village of all the invaders. He has returned the gates to the Hall uh, of Kings before all others. He is the winner of the right of freedom. <laughs> It is with great sorrow that I must now speak these words. One of the five who compete in the rights of rulership has a... Uh... Oh my god, he's fallen! Kakino Pokamiso was found murdered outside the city be- beside a broken dragon pillar! You know, he sought to, to free a village and win a throne, and he lived with honor, but he, uh, he fell by foul means, you know. He probably will not be forgotten. Throat slit by poison. <laughs> <laughs> the right of freedom has ended. You will all be summoned for the next right of rulership. Get the fuck out. Uh, I know I've had a you lot of... dismissed the rest for the next right. That you then return to the whole of... What? They're just going to move right into it? Oh, wow. <laughs> we will be summoned now. <laughs> Would have been interesting if they made you wait a little bit, but you were going to say something, Alex, so I'll, I'll keep it paused until... Oh. Yeah, well, it wasn't, it wasn't, like, a smart comment. Uh, I was, it wasn't something that warranted pausing the game. No, but, but let's, let's get into it. I know I've had a lot of uh, questions about the beast folk in this game. I was oh, reminded because yeah. of Logos, and I keep forgetting that he's a centaur. I just keep the, thinking he's a long torso of man. And <laughs> I keep thinking... Okay, so we have these beast men who are like uh, some hybrid of cat and human or dog and human and who are variously bipedal or, or hexapodal or whatever. But you never see a guy who's like half human and half sand dollar. <laughs> well, because those ones die on the beach. <laughs> For those who didn't grow up on an island, a sand dollar is a sort of a flat, smooth echinoderm. It's sort of nature's skipping stone. It's like if nature gets by, it's like, I want a perfect skipping stone to be alive. They're pretty just... cool. <laughs> I, I got to admit, they're pretty cool. I, I like the look of them, you know? Yeah, no. They're, they're, oh, they've got no, a... they're, they're cool. They're, they're discs. Mean, but they're like... Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, they're like if uh, if starfish were even less like had even fewer like reasons to live. That's, they're a little, they're a little tiny dome with a hole in the bottom, a little tiny they're, disc. Yeah. they're like a, they're like a sea urchin, but flatter and with no spines. So nature has equipped them with no tools or weapons apart from concealing themselves in the mud. And if you pick one up in your hand, the immediate thought is, 
I could skip this so many times if I just <laughs> flung it out into the sea. <laughs> and you would be doing it a favor. Yeah, he probably wants to get away from you. Yeah, like everybody yeah. wins in that situation. <laughs> Maybe yeah, that's I mean, why they evolved to be like that. <laughs> what if a slammer pog had a tiny little mouth at the in the middle on the bottom? Yeah, I and they have a cool they have a cool little star shaped pattern on the on the top. Yeah, sand yeah, dollars. They're actually, man. they're quite beautiful. Um, but I don't imagine sure. they would be as beautiful if they were hybridized with a human being. <laughs> you just have a sad, screaming, drowned face on the bottom of a of a sand dollar. Of a dead sand dollar on the beach. There'd just be hundreds of them. You'd wonder that, where that's they what came we call, from. That's what we call an evolutionary dead end right there. All right. No, Luke has addressed my concerns. <laughs> the, 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 hybrid of, the hybrid state of sand dollar plus human is an animal that does not live. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. I mean, what did these guys even look like inside? What's inside of them? A sand dollar? Yeah. They sort of extend, I think, lots of little kind of tenderly things that they use to dig around with. I never even yes. thought of that. Spongy and probably slightly tentacly, I guess. I honestly don't know. Like, I've never witnessed a live sand dollar, I think, in the entirety of my life. So I recently saw someone crack open a sea urchin to get at its contents, and there was less mm. in there than I thought there would be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, having spent quite a bit of time in Japan, you get to see the insides of a sea urchin fairly frequently. So, uh, um, yeah, it's it, it's just this sort of yellow orange snot it's, that for it's, some reason people like to eat, including my wife. It's it's <laughs> like a it's like segmented like a fruit. It's got kind of yeah. Really, doesn't seem to be much lumps. going on in there. Yeah, just weird orange lumps. So yeah. if, if in this case the uh, you know the sand dollar tour when you pried it open it would be <laughs> that but with like hands. <laughs> I'm just thinking of face instead yeah. of a little sea dollar mouth. There are some like rocky outcroppings you can go to on the coast where they're just covered in like shells from seagulls that just pick up anything that they can find in the sea and just dash it oh, against yeah. the rocks. That's how they spend their calories. They just like, boom. And then they just come down and eat what's inside and and continue on their way. One of my favorite nature documentary bits that I saw was sea otters eating sea urchins. Because the sea urchins defenses are useless against an otter. Like (laughs) beyond, it's like effortless for a sea otter to eat as many sea urchins as they want. Like just (laughs) the spines are so futile. Like, they might as well just be like, it's like picking apples off a tree. It's just nothing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shall we, shall we play more of the video game? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, yeah, sure. Why not? Uh, is contestant number four here a Frankenstein? <laughs> Invaders yeah. have been driven from our fishing villages, and the right of freedom has been completed. All of Samaria rejoices at your actions. This is the second right of rulership. The invaders are led by a general named Claudius, who has the reputation of being a ruthless and powerful strategist. He and the rest of the Hesperian mercenaries are believed to be based on an island near Marit. You shall seek out the general and make certain that he never shall invade our kingdom again. Return with his child. This is the right of conquest! You are escorted by the guards through the corridors of the Hall of Kings and eventually led out of the gate. I I like to imagine that they really drag you out of there. Like, one on each shoulder. <laughs> they get, they grab you, kicking and screaming. They get so hyped yeah. by Logos' like, anger at the end. Yeah, we gotta get these guys out of here. <laughs> Can, uh, the uh, Oh, the right of standings. Oh, the current standings of the rights of rulership. Quest of art. The following contestants are unranked. Elsa von Spielberg, Gort, and Magnum Opus. Look at that. And this is the right of rulership contestants. Oh, uh, Kakino Pukamiso. Yeah. Who 
Rip in forgot peace. that he was a guard and went over to guard another dragon altar and then got you know throat slash poisoned. So yep. You know. Tell me a little as, bit about one does. Tell me a little bit about Gort. What do we know about Gort? Gort. Oh, we know we know he's a Frankenstein. We know he's a Frankenstein. Yeah. And that's about it. Villages invaded. Knox was freed. Assassination. It's, it, using, I like to use the term X Man much like I use the term Frankenstein. <laughs> Max <is laughs> or sweet. a Dracula. Or a Dracula. Yeah, or dra- like just wrongly and deliberately and knowing yeah. exactly what I'm doing. <laughs> Max has been freed from the mercenaries by Questo Bear, the Prince of Chapier. I, I appreciate how only Naco- Naxos was freed. We were the only <laughs> ones who did it. We we're the only ones who did it. There were five villages that needed help. And now they're um, just like, we'll just leave the other ones, I guess. Well, they're like, well, Quest of Red already won, so. Yeah. <laughs> also, they're just fishermen. Am I right? <laughs> like, come on. I mean, I'm, I'm not sure because this is actually, I think, further than I've ever gotten in Quest for Glory 5. I stopped that soon when I originally bought the game the first time. Um, I feel like there might have been a situation wherein you can go and like free all of the villages, um, yourself individually. But you know, I figured give everybody a fighting chance, right? So yeah, give I guess. everyone a chance to squander their potential. Exactly, exactly. Kakino Pukumiso assassinated. Kakino, a member of the Sumerian Guard and a competitor from the right to rulership, was found murdered at the crossroads. A dragon pillar was shattered near his body. He died bravely in the cause of our kingdom. He shall be mourned. Are we sure he died bravely, though? We are not sure of that. <laughs> oh, like, well, that's an assertion. I'm not sure that we can be co- confident. About. Okay, so he was he was brave to join the rights of rulership, and then he went off sure. and died. So we can infer that he died bravely. We don't know. Yeah. If there he was did. bravery involved. We're not sure if he was brave at the end. No, no. Le- actually, like he was like a skeletal husk because of all the piss, shit, and vomit <laughs> around his death site. <laughs> and so they actually they actually know to a degree of certainty that he died in. As much of cowardice as of violence. Um, <laughs> he was, they just, he know, was they're, they're so protect- distraught that every single aperture in his body opened up and expelled its contents. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they, they're trying to, you know, they, they're, they're trying to save his family name and all that stuff. So Yeah, no, I mean, you, you don't want to be that guy yeah. who's like, yeah, is, did he die bravely? I don't know. You don't want he to died that. of rapid dehydration from <laughs> pissing himself to death. <laughs> he he was so scared. Oh. It's just piss, 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 spinal fluid dead. That's what happened to him. Competitors <laughs> must find the location of the Hesperian mercenary's fortress and defeat their general. The person that returns with the general's child shall be deemed the winner of this quest. Excellent. Oh, it's bank robbery. The first bank of Silmaria was robbed last night. Estimated loss to the bank is about 5,000 drachmas. A 2,000 drachma reward has been posted for the arrest of the robber. Nice. Now we're all caught up. We are all caught up. It's surprisingly late in the day. I'd have thought this would have started early in the morning, but... No, apparently they... that the... uh, second set of rights of rulership were given to us after closing time in town and we had no option to actually do anything before before then so adventure steal this close for the night okay fine hey do you want to know one cool thing about uh, uh, voicing everybody and having I want to my know brain cool things about voicing everybody yeah but but having my brain also uh, yeah. what that means is that I don't remember a goddamn single voice that I've done <laughs> not one <laughs> no, I could I, I might be able a few to, of them I could do phallus yeah but your memory's good your memory's very good in fact Alex you may have the best memory of anyone I know for certain things for certain things uh, like what was her voice? Uh, it was, it was German, but weird. 
Oh, yeah. Like a German person <laughs> who isn't entirely well. Oh, boys. Oh, you're safe. For so... Should I say it's an island here? <laughs> Whoa. All over the road there. Anne motions you to sit down at the table. She'll be right with you. This tank rotates and then disappears through a solid wall. Nice. She's got some serious quads. <laughs> uh, have a good news for you and for me. I don't want you to know. You really don't. You eat it. You taste it worse. You just stick it in your... Put your body... Put your bunch. <laughs> I don't know what to do with that. Good eyes. Uh, no, this is this is this is way better. Her original voice was like, it was legitimately infuriating. <laughs> this one's just incomprehensible. Oh, wrong. oh well, good eyes for you to have a fine. Mm-hmm. That voice almost sounds like a a reversed recording. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yep, 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 yes, yep, 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 what, what? Yes, yep, yep. Yep, 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 yep. Matt's, I'm not Matt's, affecting this at all. That's just a thing that Matt does. Yeah, Matt's ability to emulate a reverse recording is truly uncanny. <laughs> Don't play it backwards. It's I'm going to play that backwards. Hold on. So I have no idea if that actually sounded like anything, but there you go. I'm super curious, actually. I've never, atta- I've never done that test before. I if it, well, it, it, it if it so. if it does say something, I will be just as shocked as all of you. Oh no! I'll, if 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 that is a coherent sentence, I will die the way uh, Paramecium, whatever his name is, died. Paramecium. <laughs> hey, uh. Hey, we got a we got a couple uh, uh, questions for Glory. Let's do them. Let's get it. Yeah, for Glory. Oh yeah. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, you you like that? Because we didn't actually play it because we can't play it while we're recording it. But I'm pretending like I heard it. Uh, You know. So you so you buy it. It's the thing we do every time. We got we got to act hyped up. Even though we have to wait to watch the episode to feel that way. Yeah, isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? So we have, we've got a, oh man, we've got. I we, should just set up like a soundboard for you guys so that you can just hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not a bad idea. Um, anyway. Like disc jockeys. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Okay, so we we got a. We got we did a bunch of requests and uh we did the uh we did the thing where we asked you guys to to mash together two TV universes or uh we did do that. Yeah, yeah, where you thought two universes would cross over. Uh by the way, Joseph Davies says you can just type the number of the object on your hotbar to quickly equip unequip them without going I was doing screen. that earlier. That's how I that's how I unequipped and then subsequently reequipped my sword. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Uh, so let's go through good some tip. of these. Let's go through. Yeah, good tip. Good, let's go through some of these uh, these uh, these answers for uh, the the TV shows because some of them are 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 inspired, um, <laughs> and some of them I'm I'm not sure of at all, at all. So um, let's start with uh, uh, Dragon Design. Said, uh, "Hey, Family Ties, and who's the boss? Where?" Would that cross over? God, you know, where's Andrew when you need him, eh? <laughs> I mean, I feel like either it's um like uh, Samantha and one of the kids and who's in the boss um, being at the same school or some shit like that. Or if they're not in the same city, because I don't know if the cities are... Uh, Samantha! Jonathan! <laughs> Jonathan, Jonathan, Angela. (laughs) (laughs) I like how whenever we do a um, 
uh, an impression of characters from one of these old uh, sitcoms. We don't say anything of substance. We just shout out character <laughs> names with that voice. Yeah, it's just. Like, it's just... You want to do me a quick Bill Cosby there, Matt? No, you, nobody said the Cosby Show. You see, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. I can't understand. You see, I think Luke was fishing for a Rudy there, like a Theo, Theo, Rudy, Rudy. <laughs> bacon burger dog, bacon burger dog. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, just, seriously, just seriously, tangent. though. Seriously, though. Fuck Bill Cosby. Next. Uh, you see, it yeah. gets grosser as time goes on, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> fuck that guy. <laughs> I'm glad he's a joke. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> like, like dragging him up only to mock him for all eternity is fitting. Yeah, absolutely. Um,. <laughs> Yeah, so I I think that could work. Uh I the the new season of Dexter and North of 60 uh would would be great. Um I think it, are is the new season of Dexter does that take place in Canada? Place takes place somewhere northern where there is a fair amount of snow. It might be Alaska. If it is. In that, which case that'll never new work. New season of Dexter and Northern Exposure. Oh yeah, Northern Exposure, man! What a what a, what a show that was. <laughs> was that a show that was that a Canadian thing or was no? That, like that a, was Alaska. No, that no. was Alaska. That was the 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 doctor. Well, you know, no, I know it was. I know it was set in Alaska. I was just wondering if like that was no if that could, like, air airplay around all of North America. No, I'm pretty sure that was an American situation right there. Okay, um. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Idris says, uh, Perfect Strangers in Due South, uh, would be fantastic, fantastic. Uh, mm-hmm. you'd have, you'd have to cross over, like, the problem is, is that in order to cross those over, some characters would have to leave their homes, you know, <laughs> for that to happen. So it would be like one of those on location episodes where they blew the entire season's budget. Yeah, but I'm, I'm not as familiar with Due South. As I no same, uh, as I want to be, um, which is to say, more than I am right now. Oh yeah, it goes to Chicago. <laughs> so yeah, that would make sense. My God, that's perfect. Oh well, there you go. There you go. There you go. Jumping, jumping back a half thread. I couldn't get into Dexter because I fucking hate Michael C. Hall's face. Not him, <laughs> the guy, just his face. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, I find that it looks like. Like if you illustrated a person's face and then generated a rendering of the original face by giving the illustration to a neural network. And that's what would give you Michael C. Hall's face. And I just can't abide it. There's some uncanny valley shit going on there. I I like Michael C. Hall. I do not find him unattractive. I think he looks like a small orc. I think he's what happens it's when the you, severity of his features. When you let a, a talented 14-year-old draw a handsome man from memory. <laughs> yeah, he is a handsome man, but he is also quite orcish. From memory, yeah. There's not there's yeah. just there's not you weren't looking at anything. So it's a whole thing. <laughs> uh so yeah, Perfect Strangers in Due South works really well. I think uh it would be great to see uh uh Paul Gross's character, whose name eludes me, uh, mix mix it up with uh, Larry and Balky, eh? Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Twelve up. Uh, Phoebe's from Friends. Birth parents are Jack and Chrissy from Three's Company. Oh, oh, that's see that. That's daring. That's daring, and I like it. I like it because uh, uh, she, uh, she, Phoebe can scheme like Jack, but is also dumb like Chrissy. <laughs> it's beautiful. Oh, a, a dumb schemer. That's a fun archetype. Yeah. yeah. It's like, uh, like how we characterize T Bob from Mask as a sassy coward. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Mask. Uh, so yeah and okay so so corinne uh friend of the show corinne 
uh, has a headcanon that Major Briggs from Twin Peaks and Major General George Hammond from Stargate SG-1 are the same person. And at the top of the secret government work he can't talk about on Twin Peaks is actually the Stargate project. I have a less strong argument that he had a secret second family of Scully's dad on X-Files. Yeah. <laughs> because, yeah, it's the same dude. And he always plays a high-ranking goddamn major in everything he's doing or some sort of military guy. Uh, you, you would then like to... I think, I think that tracks perfectly. Yeah. I'd like to connect X Files and Twin Peaks in some way because of FBI uh, agents investigating supernatural phenomena, but then you have the awkwardness of Fox Mulder and Denise Bryson being played by the same actor, uh, but being unmeshable characters. But th- I mean, come on, you're right, Corinne. Maybe they're cousins, because like, yeah, they're all. They, that, that's that's something they do. They do. Well, I mean, they they cast Peter Capaldi as as Doctor Who, even though he was uh, in the Pompeii episode as the dad. You know, <laughs> it's true. Also, it, yeah, that's true. Also, you know, like everything doesn't have to make sense. <laughs> it's the most Twin Peaks and X Files thing to just not explain it. Yeah, just <laughs> let people spin out about it. Yeah, just let people spin out. I think that's the best. That's the best option. Also, Corinne went exactly as off the rails as I was hoping people would. <laughs> yes, yes. It's a really detailed <laughs> breakdown. Um, I know. I have heard some of these theories before in person. Uh, from her too. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, that that yeah that that oh the NBC blackout Thursday where where a bunch of sitcoms uh, had a blackout in the universe in New York City. So it was Mad About You and Friends, and then skipped Seinfeld because yeah, Seinfeld wouldn't do that. Seinfeld is like they're 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 not participants in in the greater shared universe, which I respect and also like it's the most fucking seinfeld thing ever um except for with curb your enthusiasm which in a meta sense is in a, a only in a meta sense and that's the only way they yeah. would do it right yeah uh and uh then the friends and caroline in the city thing yes absolutely so there was a huge you know there was a huge thing hey I, you know i was mad about you there's a there's something that nobody talks about anymore and it's funny because i was just watching uh uh, Stranger Things season four, uh, with Paul Reiser. God, love that guy. Fucking love that guy. You know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a crossover that I don't think people talk about enough. Mad about you and aliens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is he was such a he was such a sweetheart on Mad About You. And such I mean, a, he seemed like a sweetheart until he turned on Ripley and aliens as Burke. It's possible. Isn't it possible that it that that Burke is a descendant of uh, <laughs> of of those two? That like in Star Trek Picard, where your ancestors are played <laughs> are played by the same actor. <laughs> yes, it's like in Picard, when all your people like the goddamn same. Yeah, you should check out Picard, guys. Season two is uh, it's it's one of the clumsiest pieces of storytelling I've ever witnessed. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's this true. is simultaneously a good and a bad time to be a fan of Star Trek, it seems. It is, yeah. So I've heard that Discovery is pretty good recently. <laughs> I've heard that Lower Decks is a lot of fun. I've heard that this new show, what is it, um, that they're also... Yeah, on. yeah. Uh, Strange, Strange, Strange New, new Worlds. Worlds. Yeah. Strange New Worlds. I've heard good things about that. It's pretty great. Um, the one that people thought was kind of a shoe in Picard appears to be the one that's really shitting the bed. A lot season of... one was, you know, wasn't perfect, but it was fine. They did a couple baffling things, but season two was, God, it was like just genuinely like the basic tasks of like moving characters around and have them say <laughs> things. It's like everyone forgot how it all worked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I I agree. That was not that was not great. It wasn't great. Um. Yeah, I think. Was there any more? Dragon Design said uh, Black Sails and Lost. Never watched Black Sails. Uh, I like... watched some Black Sails. I mean, it's basically Treasure Island, just you know, told much more in depth. Would it would it cross over with Lost and the Island? Mm, good question. I'm not really sure. Yeah. Um, right. Is Black Sails a period piece? It is Treasure Island. 
It's well, literally Treasure Island. Oh, you you weren't being figurative. You were literally it's Treasure Island. Yes. With yeah. Long John Silver and shit. Long John Silver is a character. I'm fairly certain. Like I, I, it's been a while since I watched it. It's been a number of years. I watched it and when it's first aired, but I re- I distinctly recall it actually being the plot of Treasure Island. Yeah, huh. well, I should yeah. Watch or at least that. sort of the. It's almost like a prequel to Treasure Island. Okay, yeah. So it's like it's it's his it's his story and how he, yeah, got to be who he is. That's kind of cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, the, you could definitely yeah, like cross Captain that over. Flint and Long John Silver and, and what have you. I mean, the island is a whole situation that's been around for a long time. There, there's a dude. There's a there's, and all that. Yeah, there's a dude on there who's like immortal. So there's a few, few of them, few of those guys. You there's could a few immortals you could, on that island. Yeah, you could probably get like kind of meta about it and like the existence of the story of treasure island in real life has some significance to the island yeah you'd have to be you'd have to have had more coffee than i've had today to get that deep but (laughs) the smoke monster was trapped in the uh chest of doubloons that was buried by captain flint Yeah. yeah like you can you can see the outline of it you know, you'd have you'd have to you'd have to spread some stuff pretty thin, but I think you could do it. Um, I, I would have to rewatch at least some of Lost, but I feel like we could do an episode or two on Lost. Oh God, I actually do not think I could make myself watch that show again. <laughs> I'd, I'd get too angry. Way yeah, too angry. I, I agree. Uh, oh, hidden. I I spent most of an unemployment watching Lost. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I was between jobs. Really, really just mainlining futility there at that point. Oh, it was great. I was I I, I pulled my uh my desk over to the edge of my bed. Um and I would just sit on my bed. I would take meals in bed at, on my table and I had a laptop and I was watching Lost and that was my morning to my evening. <laughs> that sounds kind of awesome. That does count. <laughs> that does sound kind of amazing. Yeah. I am. Uh, yeah. I am currently. I watched Lost and Death Note and like two or three other series. Um, and the only times I ever really got, uh, practically even got out of bed, aside to, from to go to the bathroom or the kitchen, was to uh, go to a job fair where I eventually picked up a job. Um, but uh, yeah, it was a it was a whole thing that happened. I am uh, currently off off uh, in between jobs right now too so uh if you guys want to mm-hmm. write in the comments something you think i should binge while i have all of this time off please do lost no I, <laughs> i've already seen it thanks thanks he's already seen it watch one too note, many times like that was interesting um what sorry death note death note it death note yeah yeah decent anime yeah death note is is pretty phenomenal i've heard it's yeah. fine yeah yeah, it, uh, <laughs> you my, you heard wrong because it is phenomenal. My son, my my son loves it too. He wants me to watch it too. Well, there you go. So maybe I'll watch Death Note. Uh, if I were gonna, uh, oh sorry, JC Siron sort of snuck this in too. If I was gonna smash two sitcoms together, it'd say Cheers and The Big Bang Theory. The plots write themselves on so many people. This bar are also in Star Trek. That's fair. That's fair. But those guys don't go to bars. Oh, they they do though, don't they? I don't know. I've never watched Big Bang Theory. I think i hate it think yeah I... what what big bang theory i have watched i was not particularly enamored with yeah you know what's, um, what's i've heard uh... the term i've heard the term nerd blackface used a few times and it <laughs> seems surprisingly appropriate you uh that's yeah that's brutal but not entirely unapt what i find with big bang theory is while watching big bang theory it made me really angry but in hindsight, I'm less angry about it. But by contrast, watching How I Met Your Mother didn't make me angry. But I hate it more the more I look back on it. They have an inverse <laughs> relationship that way. You are right. I, I loved How I Met Your Mother when I first came out. And I watched all of it. And I really enjoyed it. And now and I'm the, like, hmm. The more I think about it, the more I think yeah. I might hate this show. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god all right everybody uh that's probably all we should do for this episode as we're yeah we went long this one hey and hey right below like if you if you if we miss a couple weeks you guys don't mind if we do a couple really long episodes right like clearly right 
the the astounding thing is they do watch to the end. They will comment on bullshit that we say right like around the middle and at the end. Um, and I, it's not the kind of thing that you find just kind of clicking around. I don't think, generally speaking. So no, kudos to you folks for for wasting a whole lot of time listening to our nonsense. Well, we are paused in a video game that we promise we will one day finish. <laughs> I uh, this whole time, like. Since the start of the questions for Glory, I've had an image search up with Dexter Actor written <laughs> in the search term because I can never remember Michael C. Hall's name. C. Hall? And it's just yeah. dozens of pictures of Michael C. Hall. And uh-huh. it's really it's really bumming me out. I should close this tab. <laughs> if really if you me. want to get pissed off by Michael C. Hall, if you already like if if his face already makes you uncomfortable. Um, go watch, what is it called? Harlan Coben's um, something or other. Because he puts on a really unconvincing accent throughout the whole oh, thing as well. Yeah, that's the one his daughter was kidnapped. Yes. Right? I yeah, forget no. the name of the show. Harlan Coben, I, watched... I think, was the author in much in the way of like a John Grisham or a, uh, you know. I watched, uh, I watched all of it just to enjoy how bad it felt to be watching it. <laughs> It was self-harm, was it? Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, I saw it's like, oh, it's that guy whose face makes me so angry. I'm going to sit down and watch <laughs> all of this. Great idea. Great idea. Uh, hey, look. You guys stay, stick and stay. And we did, no. Say, and, and to answer your question, uh, Spivey, no, we did not go see Sonic 2 again. We just, it was just a series of complicated things, and I was going away, and you know, stuff happened. And I think, yeah, there was sickness one week, and then Matt had to go away from town. Matt had to Matt had to run from Johnny Law for a couple of days last week. Yeah, now he's back. Now I'm back with a new identity. Well, what's funny is I didn't actually end up going anywhere, but that's a story for didn't another you? day. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, no, know. it was it was it was a whole thing, man. It was a whole thing. Uh, but we'll get to that another day. <laughs> it's all right, friends. Yeah. Take see you next time. Take it easy. We'll see you next time. It probably in a few minutes. A few minutes couple bye oh no damn depends on how fast your internet is <laughs> yeah and how and and when we eventually end the episode you'll know because the music will be going if it's uh if it's legit or not but we won't well we won't even know we could be in the ne- the next episode right now if luke's feeling saucy it happens oh, I, 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 I could just go hey everybody welcome back and then guess what we're doing it yeah, yeah, that's the, pretty much how it works too. The, One of the us episode, just says the episode we're in the next break could have been ten minutes ago. <laughs> could have been. <laughs>